Now that we've uh, gotten the cradle, the saddle done for the wing, and the battery box, it's now time to coat it. Also, this is a good time if you plan on uh, doing any uh, wiring in the fuselage, like if you plan on adding nav lights or whatever, to do it now before you, before you cover it. We plan on adding a uh, floats to the plane, so I went ahead and made the cut in the uh, in the uh, the uh, back part of the fuselage area. Went ahead and did that. And the other thing you need to do is this is uh, held in place with uh, double back tape. Make sure you take off the uh, strips and uh, firmly put it in there. And now we're ready to coat it. It's in there, nice and tight. Uh, if you do plan on doing floats, uh, this is a perfect time now to take all your measurements and uh, get it ready. And what we're going to do is we're going to coat the plane, we're going to cover the plane, and then I'm going to come back and I have a piece of wood that I'll cut out the same slot and we'll epoxy that in there. It's just easier after the plane is all done, ready to go. That way I can uh, uh, move it around, center of gravity and all that. Anyway, so the plane is ready to be covered. Now what I do is uh, I work from the bottom around to the top. Uh, I'll do this in three sections. We'll cover the bottom first, then we'll cover the sides, and then I'll cover the top. And when this is done, the overlapping <coughs> pieces will actually wrap around the plane like this, just kind of like uh, if you do roofing. Um, it just looks a lot more professional than if you were to just kind of randomly do it in pieces. So, and that'll be next. I'll show you how to cover the plane. Okay, we're going to go ahead and coat this, uh, cover this plane. I use Econocoat. Uh, it's designed for low temperature. Uh, it's foam safe, so that way you don't melt the foam when you put it on. And make sure your surface area that you're working with is uh, very clean and that you have a fresh blade, uh, Exacto blade. I use a number 11. And what I found to do is cut parallel strips off of the film and then cut the size to the plane. That way every time I come back to my roll, um, we don't have goofy cuts in it and that ends up wasting more. Now for the bottom of the plane, I take the widest measurement, which will be up here, and it's uh, roughly uh, three and a half, so or uh, three and a quarter. So I'll cut the the covering, the film, to three and a half, and then from there I'll go back and um, I'll uh, where it tapers back here. Once I get it cut, I'll uh, trace that off and cut it to size, and then uh, I'll show you how we coat it. All right, I got the piece cut. First thing you want to do is, uh, you know, make sure it fits on there, and you've got enough room. Uh, on the ends of this paper, there's uh, clear tape. Uh, the, the clear, uh, there's no color to it. This won't stick to anything. Um, go ahead and, if it's going to be on the plane anywhere, cut it off, like I did back here, because I'm going to, I'm going to do this flush back here. So I went ahead and cut it off. <coughs> And uh, first thing you'll need to do is remove this clear backing. This is what protects the, uh, the covering from uh, getting dirt and dust on it. So just before you're ready to cover the plane, remove that film. Line your, uh, line your covering up on the plane where you'd like it. If you've never done this before, you, you probably want to practice on a couple different pieces of, uh, of the plane that aren't important. That way you kind of get a feel for how this stuff works. And what I use is just a typical iron on its lowest setting. Um, they sell particular items, uh, irons, just for this and um, and that's fine. I wouldn't recommend using a uh, heat gun though because we're working with foam. You want a, a constant temperature all the time, whereas a heat gun, the closer you move it to it, the hotter it gets, and the further away you move it, uh, the colder it gets, you won't get a consistent cover. Um, and then I just made a sock that goes over this. 
So if you buy a, um, a particular iron made for covering planes, be sure to buy the sock. And then once you get it on there and uh, get it centered where you'd like it, make sure everything's covered. I usually start in the middle and work my way out and get a spot where you can tack it and then just start working from there. And if you find that it's not quite in the center, it's just as simple as pulling it up. That's why you want to tack it first. And you want to pull it up, get it centered, and start your covering again. Again, start on the lowest setting on your iron and work your way up because it, uh, you know, if you start hot and work the other direction, you can't, uh, you can't reverse that. If you get this film too hot, it will actually, when you go to pull it away, the color will stay on the plane and this will and it'll separate. The other bad thing is is uh, you could start uh, bubbling the foam real bad. So this foam can take quite a bit of heat, but there's uh, you know use the the minimal amount of heat that you possibly can. And you just go and you start working in the middle and working your way out. And this film is. Uh, very easy to go around uh, compound curves and stuff. It's just a matter of working it. Uh, what I would recommend is, is once you find the setting heat-wise that you like, make sure you stay constant throughout that. If you find an area where you need a little bit more heat, let's say you get into a corner like this, and this isn't a very big one, but if you get into a corner where it will want to crease on itself, that's where you use a little bit more heat. It'll shrink the uh, material a little bit more. It'll pull that tight and that crease will come out. So, and these are things you'll learn as you start covering planes. Uh, the first time around, your plane probably won't look very good unless you're a wizard at this. Uh, it does take practice just like anything, but uh, if you just go slow, take your time, use low heat to start with and then work your way up heat-wise until you find the top end of the heat scale like uh, on this iron I have it set on the first setting and then uh, if there's areas like once I get to wingtips and stuff I'll move it to the next setting up and that's about as hot as I can go with it before it starts uh, where I have to start worrying about it damaging the foam or the film. Once you've got the piece secured on there fairly well um, you're going to have leftover and this is a good time to trim it back you can either, being as we're going from bottom to top, the next piece will cover this, but you'll still see the outline in the next piece of coating. So what I like to do is I'll take my knife and I'll start up here and I'll just uh, follow the uh, outline of the plane, the fuselage as we go back here. and gives us a nice clean edge and it's, that's ready to be ironed down and we'll do the same thing to the opposite side here you can see I have excess on this side do the same thing then I'll tack that down iron it down and then we'll trim the front off and we'll leave the battery box covered for now when I go to mount the battery box lid cover back in there uh, that's when I will take and uh, cut the inside of this out uh, next, next step we'll do is we'll cover the side of the plane.